It is the fourth anniversary of the Bali bombing. Security is tight on the Indonesian resort island amid preparations for a memorial service. 2,002 people died in the bombings, which have been blamed on Southeast Asian Islamic group Jama Islamia. The blast shattered the image of Bali as a tranquil tourist destination and raised alarming questions about terrorism in the region. Just last September, a triple suicide attack in Bali killed 20 people. Jakarta has so far arrested and convicted more than 300 militants but there are fears many more remain in the country. Tony Ridley is security risk director at International SOS. Tony great to have you with us today. Thank you. Four years on what do you think has been achieved in Indonesia in terms of the authorities efforts to try and uh, calm tourists, investors, anybody who basically is traveling to Indonesia's fears? Sure certainly Indonesia's made significant advancements with their social and political adjustments. They've made greater ties with the region certainly the sharing of information and they've also welcomed foreign expertise or advice in terms of combating or overcoming some of these issues so certainly there's been significant developments and improvements over the last four years. Improvements to the extent that the chance of another terror attack has actually lessened or do you think it's still the same? Um, it's fragmented to a certain degree larger organizations such as JI there's still permissible areas in Indonesia where there's not a firm sense of governance or a strong uh, response from the military or the police so there is still instances but certainly in the major areas certainly two tourist areas, that th risk has been reduced, but it will always be an attractive target, so the risk always remains. It's uh, Sri here joining the interview. Now, since Bali, since the Bali bombings, 300 militants arrested. We have JI leader Azari bin Hussein uh, shot dead in a shootout in central Java last year. As we stand right now, how real is the threat of uh, Jamal Islamia, not just in Indonesia, but across uh, Southeast Asia? Uh, JI, in its uh, how we understand it four or five years ago, is certainly not as uh, resilient or as strong as it was then. Now it's, it's more of a fragmented organisation. It's still very prevalent, or certainly hybrids of that original formation exist. Certainly most recently we've seen in the Philippines after the last couple of days with bombings in the south of Mindanao. We've seen uh, collusion or certainly uh, inclusions in Indonesia and Thailand and so on. So its elements are still there, but as an organisation, much like Al-Qaeda on a global level, has been fragmented significantly. You've just mentioned three countries there, the Philippines, Indonesia and Thailand. If we were to compare them, which do you think has the highest level of risk? Uh, it, it depends in terms of relevance. Certainly Thailand in the south at the moment, uh, certainly around the locations of Hajai and so on, is, is an extreme risk by comparison. There, there's a substantial history and certainly an access to uh, both multinationals and travellers and so on. Um, but the Philippines is largely in a rural area. There are some corporates which are being affected. Um, so in order of priority, the southern Thailand would be of a greater concern, particularly if it uh, migrates towards uh, mm -hmm. Bangkok in particular. Um, and Indonesia has been relatively stable in recent times. And the Philippines is obviously taking second place at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. There have been some fears recently that radical uh, elements have infiltrated um, Islamic parties in Indonesia. Let's just take the example of Indonesia alone for a moment. Um, do you feel that there is a more legitimization of, uh, of, of radical movements in Indonesia? Uh, certainly part of the social program that Indonesia is engaging in is, is, is the Pesantrians, where it's typically been a recruitment base or a, a, uh, a nest for some of those fundamentalist or those separatist organisations. And unfortunately in some of the, the low social areas of Indonesia or any arts parts of Asia, it's, it's a breeding ground. So certainly they're engaging that and it's being reduced and it's being targeted overall to diminish that actual overall effect that it's having. Absolutely. We really need to uh, strike at the grassroots level, try exactly. to um, close that gap between rich and poor or in terms of economy. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Tony Ridley, Security Risk Director at International SOS.